Hello, welcome to Project 152, your weekly specialist exam prep. This is week six and the solutions to those questions. Every week I release a new set of questions. In the link down below, you can uh, find the next set of questions. Click the link, it'll all make sense. All right, let's go on to the solutions. So this question here, and this question in the paper that it appeared in was the worst multiple choice question that students did, and it was question one. Why was it the worst one? It was because students got a little too overconfident, I think. They saw that we're dealing with like solutions, complex numbers, that kind of thing. They saw a solution and they were told, what's the other solution? And they immediately thought conjugate root theorem and they found the conjugate of that, which is B, and they all circled B. B is incorrect. So why is B incorrect? It's because the conjugate root theorem is not in play here because this value is imaginary. And the conjugate root theorem only works when all of the coefficients and constants are real. That ain't it. So what we're actually dealing with here is a root of a complex number. A root of a complex number. So I'm going to show you two ways to solve this because there's an easy way and a more difficult way. All right, so you should know that the roots of a complex number are equally spaced around a circle. The roots of a complex number equally spaced around a circle. Now we're told that one of the roots of this complex number is negative 2, negative 2i. Now negative 2, negative 2i is there. So it stands to reason that because we're dealing with a square root, there's only two solutions, and if they're equally spaced around this circle, the other one must be here. So the answer is 2 plus 2i, the answer is c. All right, now that is a little bit too much for people, so how else could we do it? So another method would be, well, we know one of the solutions is negative 2, negative 2i. So that means that in this equation, z can be equal to negative 2, negative 2i. So negative 2, negative 2i squared equals ai. And then we can solve this for a. So looking at our left-hand side, we have negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. We have negative 2i times negative 2 twice, so that's going to be positive 8i. Uh, and then we have negative 2i all squared. So that's going to be positive 4i squared, which is negative 4. All right, so here we can see that 8i equals ai, therefore a equals Eight. So now that I know a equals 8, I can put a back in here. So I can say that z squared equals 8i. And to find the square root of literally any complex number, having it in like cis form would be easier. So z squared equals 8 cis 90 degrees. And you might be wondering where I've got that 90 degrees from. 8i is up there. I know where it is. I draw pictures, right? Um, and then we're finding the square root of that. So it is the square root of 8 cis the angle divided by 2, which is 45 degrees. Okay, only one of those answers has an angle of 45 degrees, and that is 2 plus 2i. I am certain that if I think a little bit about how to take this square root of 8, right, because that's the magnitude of this here, I could find that length and that length, and they're definitely going to be 2. 2 plus 2i. But boy, I think drawing a picture and just putting them on a circle was way easier than that. So, draw a picture and celebrate, and next question. All right, here we have another question. Uh, the Cartesian equation of a sphere is given by this nonsense here. What is the center and radius of the sphere? Now, if you don't like completing the square, you are very much not going to like this question. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this one, but I'm going to make sure that I'm grouping my x's, my y's, and my z's together. Okay, and you can see that I've drawn it out and I've sort of spaced it out very strategically. Let's see why. I can complete the square here, right? by halving my b value and squaring it. So half of 2 is 1 um, and adding it. Right? And I'm going to do the same on both sides because you've got to stay balanced. 
Uh, y squared minus 2y, again, I'm going to complete the square here. Halve it, negative 1, square it, positive 1. Okay, and then z squared, I can just leave z squared. Oh, don't forget your plus 1. Okay, so I've just added two ones to each side. What does that allow me to do? Complete the square here. x squared plus 2x plus 1 can be expressed as x plus 1 squared. Complete the square here. y squared minus 2y plus 1 can be written as y minus 1 squared. And z squared, well, you can stay z squared equals 9. Now, this is an equation of a sphere that many of us are much more familiar with. The center of our sphere is the square root of that. Oh, sorry, the radius of our sphere is the square root of that. So radius equals 3. And the center is equal to this value and this value and this value, but the opposite of what you'd expect, right? So negative 1, positive 1, and 0. Do I have an answer of 1, 1, 0 and radius 3? Negative 1, 1, 0 and radius 3. Done. That's it. Completing the square. If you see them in that form, you should think about this straight away. Get it done. All right. Uh, celebrate. Next question. All right. Now, here we have another one. Now, this is a tick active paper and I haven't opened my calculator yet. Pretty impressive, but it's time. Okay, so I'm not going to muck around here. I'm going to enter this directly into my calculator. Now, this is the sort of thing that you forget how to do if you don't practice it occasionally, so make sure you pay attention to this one. All right, so this is what we're trying to calculate. The imaginary part, the imaginary part of cis pi on 8, that complex number, uh, but that complex number raised to the power of negative 2. So we want to do a calculation on a complex number. So calculations tend to hide in options. So we go options. Uh, there's our complex number there. All right, now, what do I want to find? I want to find the imaginary part. So I just arrow it across. All right, that's going to help me find the imaginary part. I'm going to enter a pair of um, brackets in there. I'm going to put this cis pi on 8 into my calculator. Now, your calculator doesn't have a cis button. That's not how it works. What you do is you tell your calculator uh, what the modulus is, and you tell your calculator what the argument is. Right. Now, the modulus is 1. The magnitude, if you like, is 1. And then we're going to use an angle symbol. And then our argument is pi on 8. And this is how we're going to type our um, complex number into our calculator. So, 1. And then you've got to do a shift and this button right here. Oops, maybe my 1 didn't work. There you go. 1, and then a shift right there, and then you type in your angle. Now, I'm doing pi over 8. Okay, am I finished? No. I'm trying to find the imaginary of the imaginary part of this raised to the power of negative 2. Okay, uh, I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps, like, the way that I've written it, it's going to not do the thing that I want to do, because I, I want the imaginary component of the whole thing. So I've just put another set of brackets in there. Might not be necessary. You can experiment with that. Okay, and there I have an answer. Negative root 2 on 2. SD that zero, negative 0 0.707. Do I have that answer? Close enough. Nailed it. Um, you can see that your calculator can do that. Um, we're going to do complex number stuff on our calculator occasionally. Practice. Boom. Okay, here we are. Uh, dominance matrices, everyone's favorite, relatively easy stuff. Okay, so all blah, 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 blah. Part A, by allocating 1 to represent defeated and 0 to represent either was defeated by or no result, complete this matrix. Okay, uh, there is something I can do straight away every time I come to a dominance matrix. I can put zeros in that diagonal because teams don't play against themselves. Okay, straightforward. Now, A defeated D, the way that that works is I find A, I find D, right? I start with the one that won. A defeated D, and I'm going to put a number one right there. Next up, B defeated A, C, and E. So starting at B, A, C, and E. You know what I mean. C defeated A and E, so either side. D defeated B, C, and E. And finally, E defeated A. 
That's all the wins. All we need to do is fill the rest in in zeros. All right, that is one of the most colorful things I've ever done. I love it. Uh, next question. The organizers need to rank the teams in individual places from first to fifth. They decide to use the ranking n plus n squared to achieve this. Use the model n plus n squared to rank the teams. All right, so because I'm going to have to deal with a fairly large matrix and then do it a second time and square it, I'm definitely going to enter it. Uh, let's go back here to this one here. So this lets me save matrix matrices, uh, and they're going to be five by fives. All right, just enter my numbers in. Okay, all entered. Execute to save it, I think. Or maybe just exit out to save it. And we've got our matrix there. Okay, now I'm going to exit out of that. And then I need to do some calculations. So options is where I go. Matrices here. All right, now that was called mat A. So here's my A, alpha A. And then I'm going to add matrix A squared. So maybe a set of brackets. Put in uh, the matrix alpha A alpha a and square it and I should be finished. All right well pretty close that's a plus a squared. All right so now that I've got this matrix just copied in from there I can say that a has four points b has three four five six seven I think you don't need to watch me add up. Now it does say that you need to rank them so you have to indicate somewhere that like d was first and then uh, b was second and then indicate that like A and C were tied for third, so first, second, third, and E came last. All right, so there's my attempt at ranking it. You could probably communicate that a little bit better, but done, ranked. Now part C and part D are rare questions from the QCAA where you're asked to find a limitation or a mathematical refinement. So let's see exactly what the QCAA was expecting for part C. Use the result to identify a limitation of the organizer's ranking model. So have a think about it. This is what the QCAA says the limitation is. The limitation of the ranking model is it does not provide individual positions from first to fifth. Now, are there other limitations that you could have come up with? Sure, there doesn't seem to be any indication of like what would happen if there was a tie, perhaps. Had to double check that. No conversation about a tie. So I think a limitation might be like there's no provision here for a tie, like if someone wasn't to win or lose. But this is the limitation that the QCAA was hoping for. It's one that they was hoping you'd find, but they would allow others. Okay, uh, part D, state a mathematical refinement. So... Based on that limitation, what could they do instead? Well, QCAA says that the ranking model could be improved by including weightings in the calculation, weighting the second order dominance lower than the first order dominance. Now, presumably when you do that, you fix this ranking issue, but possibly not. It depends on what sort of uh, thing we've got going on here. But this is what the QCAA was looking for with these two questions. Now, these sorts of questions are fairly rare. They don't happen very often where you're asked to describe something like this. But here we are. Okay, last question. Let's celebrate before we go. Now, I must have been feeling kind this week because after maybe last week's massive last question, nice and easy, Leslie matrices. Ah. Okay, read through, blah, 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 blah. There's an X and a Y here, and it says state the values of X and Y. So... X and Y represent survival rates of the zeroth year age group and the first year age group. So X and Y will be 25% in their first year and 30% in their second year, 0 0.25 and 0 0.3. All right, so the next part of this question is interesting. Estimated that the initial female population was 510, 480 in their second and 420 in their third years. So that gives us initial population matrix. Now, of course, it's worth noting that this population is only the female population. When it comes to Leslie matrices, we can only deal with female populations, and then we have to deal with male populations in the end. Here it says, found that the ratio of male to female was approximately 1 to 2. Okay, so that must be important information for the end, because part B says, estimate the total population, so females and males. So two stages, we're going to find the female population, and then we're going to use that ratio to then add the males into the population as well. All right, so when do we want to know the population? We want to know the population at the start of 2025. 
Now, we started in 2021, so let's just write that out. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, pretty clear cut. We're moving forward four years. So, it's going to be L to the 4 times the population. All right, so that's it. I think I just typed this into my calculator. I'm good to go. Before I do that, I might just mention, people probably won't like this, like P2025. It looks like we're going 2025 years into the future. So maybe I'll write P4 there. Okay, typing that into my calculator. Now I'm going to enter it a different way, just because I think it's a bit faster when you're dealing with smaller matrices. Math, and then this button here. I'm doing a 3 by 3 into those values. And don't forget the little raise to the power of 4 there. And then we're going to multiply it by a 3 by 1. Oh, wrong place. And then we're going to move across a little bit, and we're going to multiply it by a 3 by 1. I think I've put my multiply sign in a weird spot. There we go. All right, continuing. All right, so this is the distribution of the female population. Now, the total, according to the QCAA, total, uh, let's write female so we don't get confused, is this number plus this number all rounded, 2166 plus 938 plus 81. And they rounded the 938 before getting to this step, and they rounded the 81 before getting to this step. So the total estimate is 3185, according to QCLA. I'm not going to get into it at the moment, but I think the total female population should be estimated to be 3186. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, my next step, what am I doing next? Uh, total population. All right, so total, let's do the male population. Well, the total male population, it says male to female, one to two. All right, so for every two females, there's one male. So we should just take the female population and divide it by two. 1592.5. Now, the QCAA, I like what they do next because they round this up. Well, what I should say is they just round it normally. We're estimating into the future. You don't need to round it down. It's not, it doesn't mean half a birth. It means this is our approximation. 0.5, we just round normally. All right, that brings us to a total, which is equal to 3185 plus 1593. Number. All right, that's it. My final answer, 4,778. Um, all right, I think that was pretty decent. We can do a little celebration. And that's going to be it. This has been the week six solutions, and it has by far been the shortest video we've made in this series. So beware, because next week's question, maybe I'll throw something in a little bit funky into there, something a little more challenging. Uh, we're back to tech free next week. All right, link in the description. Go there. You can download the new questions right now. And catch you next week.